All right, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about uh, stress um, and how we transform it using the transformation equations. Um, that's uh, the root of Moore's circle. Um, so we're just going to briefly go over those transformation equations. We have no intention of using them, but it is instructive to remember that using the transformation equations um, allows us to derive the Moore circle. Uh, we're going to talk about plane stress and strain uh, when one of the stresses are zero uh, and then be able to find our principal stresses. And then we'll uh, just walk through an example of Moore's circle. Um, anytime we find a state of stress, uh, we can find our principal stresses, and those are the stresses that we have to use for our failure criterion. Um, as we said in the last lecture, that any um, element uh, of a material that has um, has been subject to, to loading will have a state of stress. Now this state of stress is at a point um, somewhere in the material, so if we have various loads in the material, maybe applied uh, moments, um, then if we look at some point in the material, and for machine design we're, we're looking for the point where we have the highest uh, forces, um, and uh, well really the highest stresses because we have different areas so they may act on uh, so even the higher forces if they're distributed over larger areas may have actually have less stress but we're we're concerned with the points in a material that have the highest stresses so this is the general state of stress we have um, the stress on the face these are our normal stresses we have the stress um, uh, against the face these are our shear stresses um, and we've only shown three of them here. There's actually six. There's a corresponding one on each of the other three faces. Um, and that represents the general state of stress. This is represented by the stress tensor, um, which we can solve uh, using the eigenvalue problem to find um, our maximum stresses. These are the principal stresses. But all structural elements have a triaxial state of stress. Okay. Often, um, in real life applications, there's a negligible stress in one direction, and so we call this uh, plane stress. Uh, equivalently, if we have a um, state of stress in one direction that's zero, uh, we can also look at the corollary of having plane strain, but we usually talk about uh, plane stress when the stress is zero. So if the stress is zero in one direction, then we can represent this that three-dimensional stress element in two dimensions, and we get this little stress um, cube. And again, this is a point in the material. It's not actually a cube, but representing it as a cube allows us to um, look at it as a cube and then take the limit as the cube gets smaller and smaller to derive all of our equations. Um, on this face, we have uh, sigma x. We usually define this as the x face. Uh, on this face uh, here, we have sigma y. The sign convention is that if the stresses are pointed outward, uh, which puts it in tension, that we have a positive state of stress. If we have them pointing inward, then the stress is negative and we have compressive state of stress. Uh, for shear, it's not as obvious, but uh, the sign convention is if we're going along the positive x-axis and going along the positive y-axis according to our normal use of the terms, that that is a positive um, state of shear. Okay. Um, these are balanced out in the balance of forces and um, they're equal and opposite. So we have this uh, uh, tau xy which represents the state of shear stress on the x face in the y direction um, and they're equal and opposite um, for the magnitudes so this is our plane state of stress now what we often care about is to find the maximum uh, stresses or our principal stresses but we don't we're often not given the principal stress information we're given the state of stress which is in terms of you know sigma x and sigma y and tau xy if we're talking about uh, plane stress and so what we can do is we can actually find the maximum stresses by looking at the forces on the 
uh, cube element and then looking at those forces as we rotate that element some angle theta. So if we do that we can balance our forces on this element uh, represented in terms of those forces resolved on those faces, um, the small areas delta A, and we can find our forces in our new directions which would be the uh, Fx prime and Fy prime and if we represent those in terms of what we know uh, which is the shear stress and the uh, Y stress and the X stresses then we can find or solve for the new stress in the X sigma X prime direction um, and in the um, sigma Y prime direction and tau X Y prime direction so if we solve these equations we can get an expression for sigma x prime um, and tau x prime y prime and then if we plug 90 degrees into the x prime equation we get sigma y prime because um, the face for the sigma x stress and the sigma y stress are 90 degrees uh, from each other okay so this is using these these are the transformation equations um, for us to find the stress in any direction based upon the given stresses from these equations. Okay. Um, so if we can, if we find the um, stresses, then we can find the principal stresses. Uh, so this just is uh, restating the previous slide uh, and showing you how the area elements are represented and how those equations are represented. There's no need for us to uh, re-derive all these equations, but uh, we should just remember that it comes from the balance of forces uh, and that the um, X prime and Y prime stresses are uh, always 90 degrees from each other and the shear stress is 45 degrees from the X prime stresses. Okay. So what we can do is this is actually a problem that's taken from the fundamentals of engineering uh, review uh, problems. So it says if I'm giving this given the state of stress, how can I find the state of stress at uh, after a an 30 degree uh, rotation? Or another way of saying it is, given the state of stress, what would how would we represent it, that state of stress if we rotated that element? So if we do that, we can use those transformation equations. We can plug the angle in uh, at 30 degrees for sigma x, and we can throw 90 degrees in to get sigma y prime and just calculate those um, stresses. So if you put the plug the numbers in for this example, they're giving you sigma x and sigma y. So you can calculate those using these transformation equations. <clears throat> Why you would ever want to do that instead of using more circle, it's not clear to me, but this is where they come from. Um, so we can use those equations to calculate the um, uh, shear and uh, normal stresses, not principal stresses, normal stresses at other orientations. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, instead of you know plugging in 90 degrees, we can just plug in these equations to get the state of stress, and it's already accounted for the change in angle. Okay. So the uh, question is, well, how do we get our principal stresses? Because those are the stresses that we need to use for our failure criteria. Um, and obviously the uh, stress uh, is a function of angle. So there should be some angle that gives us the maximum state of stress. So just like we did in calculus, if we want to uh, find the maxima of this function we can take the derivative and set it equal to zero and in this case we're taking the derivative of this stress at this new orientation with respect to theta because we want to find out where that stress at the new orientation is a maximum so we can set it equal to zero and when we do that we can um, solve for um, the angle uh, theta that gives us that maximum stress. So if we run through this, uh, take the derivative of sigma x prime, uh, which is a normal stress at some orientation, we set it equal to zero, then we can find out the angle by uh, going through this derivation. We find that this there's an angle, and this angle is called theta p, and theta p is the, the 
the angle between the state of stress that you're given and the orientation that would give you the maximum state of stress. So this angle is our angle to the principal stress plane, theta p. Okay, so we take the derivative of this equation, set it equals zero, solve for theta p. And then and once we have theta p, we can plug it back into our um, transformation equations. Um, and in this case, uh, once we put this theta p in, we actually get our principal stresses, uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2. Now, <clears throat> in this case, we have plane stress, so there's not a sigma 3, but keep in mind that we always have a three-dimensional state of stress. Um, and the convention is sigma 1 is the largest, sigma 2 is the next largest, and sigma 3 is the smallest. Okay. So if you have a stress element where you have a sigma 1 that's positive and you have a sigma 2 that's negative, that means you'll, you have a sigma, th I mean, if you have a sigma 1 that's positive, a sigma 2 negative in the uh, plane stress equation, it actually means you have a third stress that's somewhere in between and that stress is zero, okay, for a plane stress. Uh, but it's, um, just keep in mind you always have three, in three, um, stress values and that's going to be important because when we calculate our max shear um, our max in plane shear is not necessarily the same as the max shear on the element so we can do this we can find our principal stresses here by rearranging these equations after we've plugged in th theta equal theta p and we can uh, eliminate theta p from these equations to get our principal stress equations here which is sigma x plus sigma y over 2, and then plus or minus uh, this expression right here. Now this is the foundation of Moore's circle. Okay, This is the center of your circle, and this is your radius. Okay, So that's as simple as it is. When we want to find our principal stresses, we can have sigma x, sigma y, tau x, y. We can find the center of the circle, and then the radius of the circle. So the center plus the radius is going to be our maximum stress, and our, the center minus the radius is going to be the minimum stress. <clears throat> okay. Um, we also want to find the maximum shear stress. The principal shear stress is the maximum shear stress, so we can take our shear stress equation, take the derivative of it with respect to theta, solve for theta, and then this theta is the angle to the shear plane. So then we can plug that back into our tau uh, prime x, uh, tau x y prime equations and find the max in plane shear. And you can see that this is the same as the expression here. Okay, so the max in plane shear is equal to the radius okay, of the principal stress uh, for Moore circle. Now what's interesting to note is that in Moore circle, the angles are doubled. Um, and so a 45 um, degree um, angle will take you between, uh, with this 2 theta multiplier, will take you between the um, principal and shear stress orientations. And so that's why um, when we get a failure, we always get a failure uh, for many uh, materials, many ductile materials, that's 45 degrees from the um, principal plane. So the shear uh, angle is always 45 degrees from the principal angle. So this is just a summary of those equations. Um, when theta is theta p, uh, this is the expression for the uh, principal orientation. And then these are the principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2, in terms of the given stresses sigma x and sigma y. When you have theta at theta p, then you have a shear stress that's zero. Okay? So when you're at your when you have an element oriented according to your principal stresses and the shear stresses are zero. And we see that also in the Moore circle. When we have the theta, um, when the orientation of the element is aligned with the shear plane, okay, then we have our principal shear um, um, stresses and our, I'm sorry, our, our shear stresses and principal shear stresses. Then we have our um, principal normal stresses and 
those are the um, the stresses are the average of the stresses when we're at the shear plane okay so when we're at the max shear we have the average state of stress for the normal stresses okay in that orientation according to the shear plane so that's just a review of what you've learned in your mechanics of materials class um, so finding that principal shear stress we can find when we substitute that angle um, theta s for theta that gives us that average stress sigma 1 and sigma 2 uh, we can also express the shear stress in terms of the principal stresses okay so that's the expression uh, if we use the principal stresses we have sigma 1 minus uh, sigma 2 okay um, and this these are the details of the how that expression is arrived and again this is the same as the radius of the Mohr circle okay <clears throat> so now let's talk about Mohr's circle, which is really how we want to look at these problems. So instead of all using those transformation equations to find these principal uh, stresses and max shear stresses, uh, we can use Mohr's circle, and it's just a graphical method to obtain these. Uh, we derive Mohr's circle from the transportation, transformation equations by eliminating theta from the normal and principal stress equations, and then we just um, draw a circle based upon that representation, which allows us to um, see those stresses um, on a circle. Um, there's really no magic to it. We just um, have the equation of a circle, um, and we represent that equation of the circle in terms of the stresses. Okay. So the y-axis of Mohr's circle is the shear stress. The x-axis is the normal stress. Um, the center of the circle is the average stress, sigma x plus sigma y over 2. And the radius of the circle uh, is given by this expression here. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, when we look at Mohr's circle, if we're given a state of stress, sigma x, uh, sigma y, tau xy, um, on an element, then we're at some point here along this circle. Okay, now if we can find the radius of this circle, which we've said is the average stress, right? Sigma 1 plus sigma 2 over 2 gives us this value here. It's sigma average. So if we have the average stress and we, can, and we know the radius, okay, um, then we can take this point, the center, plus the radius gives us sigma 1. This point in the center minus the radius gives us uh, sigma 2. So if we go back to the previous slide, this is the expression for the radius. Okay, Sigma x minus sigma y over 2 squared plus tau xy squared, square root. Okay, So that's um, so if you are given a sigma x and sigma y, you can rapidly calculate your sigma, sigma 1, sigma 2 principal stresses. Uh, and then your max shear stress is equal to your radius. Okay. So the, what we do is we can draw we draw a coordinate system, and depending on the book that you're using, um, commonly they'll say that the shear stress is positive downward. In our book, uh, uh, for Norton, uh, it's the same result, but he draws the uh, stress. Uh, normal stress and shear stress axes and then he uh, has us represent this such that when we draw the points on the stress the faces on the circle we say if we have positive shear stress then that results in a clockwise rotation okay so in that case you'd have a this shear stress here and this shear stress here and you see this looks like a couple if you imagine these shear stresses and that would cause a clockwise rotation and that would be a positive shear you can see that also here in that sign convention because we have defined this as positive shear okay so uh, the the notation it can be a little bit confusing putting these properly on the circle can be a little bit confusing but a simple way to uh, go through that is if you have a positive um, shear, okay, then when you draw it on Mohr's circle, 
it should cause a clockwise rotation. If you have negative shear, then you will draw this so that these shear, this shear couple will cause um, counterclockwise rotation. Okay. So uh, we'll represent point A on the, the Mohr circle uh, here. It is a, that's the sigma x state of stress. So this is our uh, sigma x uh, and tau xy coordinate. And this is the sigma y and minus tau xy uh, coordinate. So if we wanted to put those two points. So uh, that gives us the points that gives those two points <clears throat> give us the uh, center of the circle. And then we can calculate the radius and find our principal stresses. Okay. So these are the points A and B. And our center is just sigma x plus sigma y over 2. And the radius is um, given by this expression here. And that's how we draw Mohr's circle. Um, this is an example um, where we have some bar that's loaded in uh, with an axial load and applied uh, torque or moment. Um, in this case, we're told that the state of stress here from our calculations, we do the analysis, we find the state of stress at this point. Uh, we find that sigma x is minus 12 KSI uh, coming from this axial load. Sigma y is zero and tau xy is um, minus 6 ksi and so notice the difference in the sine convention okay and so what we can do is we can find the center of the circle minus the radius is sigma 2 the center of the circle plus the radius is sigma mon and we go through the math and find this we can also uh, use those same values to calculate the orientation to the principal um, plane and um, this is just an example of how we do this. Okay. So if we want to find the max in plane shear stress, then that's just equal to the radius. Okay. So we can find the center. Uh, center plus the radius is the principal stress. Center plus minus the radius is the other principal stress. Um, the radius itself is equal to the max in plane shear stress. Okay. So not necessarily the max state of stress, but the max in plane shear stress. And uh, we'll clarify that out in a minute. So recall that the state of stress is actually three-dimensional, okay? And it gives us this three-dimensional uh, expression. This, this is the stress tensor times the orientation that's normal to the principal plane. If we do this, we, can, we have an eigenvalue problem that we can solve for a sigma. It gives us a cubic equation in sigma, so we can solve this uh, analytically, actually, for this expression, or we can just use some numerical solver to find sigma for those states of stress as well. So um, you could also take your state of stress and plug in the values into this matrix equation and then solve for it. Okay, but it's easier to do more circle, obviously, for plane uh, stress. Um, <clears throat> as we mentioned before, these coefficients um, uh, are the stress invariants that show up here in this expression. Okay, but this is an alternate way of getting our state of stress on an element, and then this is how we would, how we could calculate the stresses if we had um, three-dimensional state of stress versus a Mohr circle. Okay. Um, so if we have a three-dimensional state of stress, we actually get three principal uh, shear stresses um, due to those three circles that are um, from those um, principal stresses, um, from the three principal stresses. Um, and this is just a review of um, our max in-plane uh, shear stress. Okay, so uh, we'll... Uh, just kind of take a moment here and walk through an example uh, to just make sure that we're all on the same page with more circle. 